the previous mode of like explaining people's projects and stuff like that, I go back to something a bit more theoretical uh, from a very simple explanation um, on JavaScript inheritance. So basically to me it's like the journey to classes. Uh, I figured what's the best way to learn something than to like share it with 50 people and then get all the 50 you are wrong to your right. So here I am. So it's a simple journey today. Uh, so basically, if I just take two very broad categories of inheritance, we have the classical inheritance, such as in Java, and then we have the prototypal inheritance, such as in JavaScript. So in classical, um, for instance, this would be like you making a, a cut maker, like a like a plastic, like a metal cutter for a little paper men. You make the cutter. So that metal cutter thing would be like a class. And then each time you want to make like a little paper man, you cut. And then for me, from what I understand for prototypal inheritance, uh, this would be more like cutting a paper man. And then you take this paper man, put it on the paper, and cut it again. And then you can alter it and cut it again. Uh, and so basically, uh, instances where you inherit from other instances, so objects from objects. And so uh, here's the fun part that I found. Uh, I think it was like in my second or third week of learning JavaScript. It was the prototype, prototype chain. So essentially, every, almost everything in JavaScript is an object, uh, and all of them contain properties, uh, which is either like that or like that. Uh, each object has an internal property called prototype, which is like this, and is linked to a previous object. Um, so this is the prototype chain. And visually, it looks something like this. Uh, so don't worry, it doesn't go on forever. Right? Essentially, there'll be the end of the chain. Uh, and so going back to the previous slide, uh, in the two types of inheritance, we have classical and proto prototype typical. I always say prototypo. I can't remember. It's like two different terms, right? Uh, and then essentially, what my takeaway is like JavaScript does not have classes, but we try to program as though it does. Uh, and so I said, hello, ES6 classes, which is what I'm using. Um, so if I take a very simple diagram, we have inheritance. Like I mentioned, we have classical, like in Java. We don't want that. And then we have prototypal, like in JavaScript. And then two examples, the prototypal pattern and the constructor pattern. So this will be the constructor pattern, and this is the prototypal pattern. Um, so this is essentially how it looks like. I'm sure you're familiar with constructors. And then like the old school one. And then essentially, the, this example shows that like both of them are pretty much identical in terms of memory usage, uh, things like that. The abilities to create like the kids is also pretty similar. So not much difference. And this is the fun part, which is the before and the after. So there is like the, the constructor. And then how many of you have switched to ES 2015 already? And how many of you are using classes in ES 2015? OK, so I still have something to talk about, because some people haven't. <laughs> so essentially, this is like the constructor, this top bit. I'm sorry, I'm a bit short. This top bit, <laughs> this is the properties. And then you would do like a, for example, uh, like book dot prototype dot flip page, and then this is how you do the method, and then you instantiate it like that. And you put it in, and then like, you can flip page now. Whereas in 2015, uh, from the one. In 2015, we can put it all together, and we can actually call it class. Uh, but in ES 2015, essentially this is like synthetic sugar, so you're you're still doing the same thing. You are still essentially like creating uh, objects and dealing with inheritance. But it's just like a nicer class thinking kind of manner of doing it. And so over here, you create the class book. Uh, I will put like constructor. So it's still constructor, but in nicer syntax. You pass in your arguments. I put in default sometimes. Uh, my example is just making books. And then your properties, the method will be like flipping pages. And then I create another uh, example class called ebook, which extends from book. And over here, the fun thing is, besides making like defaults, you can do things like super. So super all this stuff, title, year, total pages, medium, basically just takes it from here and ignore this line. <laughs> and then I wanted to include another method, for example, compatible devices. Uh, and then for the method, you could super the flip page. I could super the previous method, and then just edit like an alert. So this shows that you can very easily extend from this one. Let's do it in a JavaScript manner. And then you instantiate them in the same manner. Like book, book, ebook. And then I can pass in more arguments that come from here. 
Uh, so that's essentially the end of it. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Any questions? You can ask them. <laughs> 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 Thank you.